Yo, what's up guys? This is ENTP Nurture and today we are going to type Chris Voss down. I don't know his complete type, but I do know his double deciding. So you know what? In this video, I'm going to show what exactly double deciding is going to look like. Now let's define double deciding. Now what double deciding means is that the human is very very balanced between self and tribe, meaning he is able to switch perspectives from his perspective to another perspe person's perspective to another person's perspective and he's able to juggle that effortlessly how many negotiations have you done um including uh, my number is high uh -huh. all right so um i've i've been you know ballparking about 150 150 negotiations. hostage negotiation including kidnappings that number is probably low you doing that many negotiations? I bet you've seen some some crazy shit go down. But what what's the like? What frustrates you? What, what when you know you're in for a, a good one? Fifty negotiations, Hostage negotiation, including kidnappings. That number's probably low. You doing that many negotiations? I bet you've seen some some crazy shit go down. But what what's the like? What frustrates you? What, what when you know you're in for a, a good one? Okay, now he asked him what frustrates you. For a double decider, people wouldn't be the issue. So, the opposite of double decider is a single decider. That means he's having problems with self and trap. So, if it's someone like a decider, he would say this particular person. Bad. So let's see what he responds. Is it double deciding or single deciding? Well, I get, there's got to be negotiations where you're like, oh, this guy or, or girl, is, is she, she's not that smart. This is going to be, a, I, I got a feeling this is going to be an easy game, I guess, the way I would say. Like, we're not playing against a very good team today. So, well, uh, or, yeah, or you're not playing against a good team. I mean, most of the time, people on the other side of the table, internationally, kidnapping, uh -huh. I mean, that's their business. That's their job. A Denzel Washington movie, Man on Fire. Yeah. Denzel Washington negotiates with the voice uh -huh. in, in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that was that guy's job. You know, it's a, fi a fictional depiction, but the voice's job was to negotiate kidnappings. And wherever there's a kidnapping industry, they divide up the responsibilities and there's people specialize in negotiations. Uh -huh. You know, I'm working kidnappings in Baghdad. Yeah. And they say, ah, you know, this uh this guy named Ali, you know, and he's got the same cell phone. It keeps coming up and different kidnappings. I'm like, yeah. They go, uh, there's more than one Ali, right? I go, no, 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 no. It's his job. He negotiates kidnappings. Yeah. You know, people go out and they take they take hostages, they find a negotiator, the negotiator brokers a deal for them. I mean, it's it's a business. Yeah. Uh so here you see how balanced he was. In comparing different perspectives, okay, that is actually his job. Can't blame him. His job is like that, you know, stuff like this. It's a very double deciding. To these negotiations. By the way, uh huh. You think Denzel Washington is ever going to see this? Yeah, I don't, I hope so. All right, you know, <laughs> he keeps playing me in movies. He doesn't call. He doesn't write. Oh. I don't get a thank you note. You know, well, what was the other Man movie? on Fire, um, Inside, Man Inside Man with Spike Lee, great movie. And then actually, uh, when he did the siege with Bruce Willis, he came to the New York office and he's a negotiator in the movie The Siege. And I get introduced to him by accident as, as we're walking around. And of course, upper management knows that if he finds out I'm running the negotiation team, that he's going to want to stop talking to them. He's going to want to spend time with me. So they, they, you know, they got him away from me as quickly uh -huh. as they could. <laughs> ridiculously gracious guy though when he came to the new york office of the fbi see one thing you'll notice about double deciding they will talk about a person they'll hit a quick jab but then they start praising him to balance that out that's what happens when you are able to see the spectrum you're able to like uh, i call this hot and cold so it's like you're going cold on someone like this guy sucks man is not sending me thank uh, thank you letters but this guy is the most gracious guy will ever meet. So this is double deciding. Single deciders don't do that. They just say, oh my God, this guy is bad. That's it. Nothing more. 
Okay. I mean, very friendly. Everybody that walked up to him and asked for an autograph, he signed. I mean, ridiculously gracious guy. Uh-huh. And so when you're up on a stage, what are what are some other key takeaways that you've learned in this 24 years of experience, hostage negotiation? What what are some other things that, that, that people can apply? So here he's asking his biggest takeaways. Now, if he was a double decider, and if he was balanced between self and tribe from the beginning, from when he was born, then he wouldn't really have a problem with double deciding and seeing from other person's shoe or understanding another person's perspective. That wouldn't be his biggest uh, lesson that he learned in past 24 years. So if he had learned anything in past 24 years, it would be something about how to manage this missing information or how to manage system things stuff like that so let's see let's say what he says let oh, you know <laughs> let's see what he says you know uh let the other side go first mm-hmm. i mean two people sit down if we're sit if you knowingly sit with me you've got something you want to say you would never have sat down if you didn't mm-hmm. you just want to know if i'm going to listen now what you've got most of the time is two people dying to have their say Mm -hmm. which means basically they're talking over each other or you talk while I don't listen and then I'll talk while you don't listen because you're thinking of what you want to say next. Let the other side go first. It's, I I need that information. I need what's on your mind. You you may suggest an idea that I already had. And the real secret to a negotiation is, you know, I want to, it's the art of letting the other side have your way. Let the other side go first. It's, I, I, I need that information. So, so here's what he's saying, right? Look, the problem is not with the people. People is something I can take care of if I know the information. So what I learned is how to take and extract that information and use it in a way where they can negotiate and, you know, rescue hostages. And he's like, I need that information. And once I get that information, it's all about how to use that and have the other person have it your way, basically. I need what's on your mind. You you may suggest an idea that I already had. And the real secret to a negotiation is, you know, I want to, it's the art of letting the other side have your way. So that's what he's saying. It's the art of having the other side. It's art of, <laughs> it's the art of letting the other side have your way. So it's like, that, that's really good. I really like that. So this is, okay, you know what, we've got this cross check and he's not really talking about people. He's just talking about, you know what, people forget about them. They're like part of the game. They are not the game. They are part of the game. And the game here is the information game. Okay, do I know what you know and how can I use what you know to have it my way? That is the game that he's playing. A little mix of everything. Huh? You know, there's everybody's everybody's trying to figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah. Virtual. The what? the rings are religious rings of different religions. Of different ones. So it's a, like a, a little mix of everything. Huh? You know, they- he's talking. Uh, now he's talking about his own like personal religion and stuff. Like what he believes, he says he's a very spiritual person. And you'll hear a double decider say this very line a lot. This very line that I'm about to play. There's, everybody's everybody's trying to figure it out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's all going to the same place anyway. <laughs> so this, that everyone is trying to figure it out, you know, it's like everyone is in the same boat. Everyone is having the same problems as we are. That is very, very double deciding. And that perspective is what brings this double deciding nature because they realize, oh my God, the other guy is having the same problem I'm having. <laughs> and I'm having the same problem this guy is having. <laughs> this perspective enables a person to be very controlled with his uh with his or her take on other human beings and they don't really blame the human being but they blame the circumstances that brought the human being up that's where you get the observers because they realize you know what this guy isn't the bad guy but the stuff he's doing this is like this is what's bugging me you know so here is talking about when he was bullied as a kid 
Now let's see how he talks about the police. Was it like pretty panicked or was it like, uh, you know what, this is it. This is what I know. Stuff like that. Like, in this clip, he's going to talk about his police and let's see whether he like blames them, accuses them, like this guy is a bad guy or he's like, yeah, yeah, this stuff happened. Yeah, they did this to me, but I learned something out of it. I can see where they came from. They had like a bad parent or something like that. So let's see what he says. Somebody hurt somebody else without even knowing they did it. Like in, in, a, in, a, in a masterclass thing, you know, they did a great job. The masterclass people are phenomenal. Yeah. So we're wandering to the very tail end of it. And they got me talking about this guy that bullied me when I was a kid. You. Yeah. yeah. You talking about, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, had, I, had, I had literally never told anybody about this. <clears throat> wow. So, you know, it's, and it happened when I was a little kid. Yeah. I literally had never told anybody about it. Not even through Landmark or anything else? Nothing. Wow. And they get it out of me in master class. They, they catch me off guard over it, you know, and it's to, to, to this day, this is one of the reasons why I hate boats. You know, I want to become an FBI agent because, you know, we, we want to go after the bad guys because the bad guys are bullies. And there's nothing I like better than getting a bully that's victimizing somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think it was instilled in me in what happened when I was, when I was a kid. But then I started comparing that to this, this interaction I heard at Landmark where somebody bullied somebody else and they didn't even know they did it. Mm -hmm. And then I began thinking about like, how many people have I hurt that I didn't even know? Right. Like they would come up to me today and said, you heard you know, I've carried this for 40 years. And I have to have done that to somebody. Right. Have to have I done that to somebody. Have. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, the, this, this forgiveness thing is a two way street and, all, and also being, being, you know, who, who do I need to go back to that I can think of? Mm. That I, and, and say, look, look, uh, since I know that inadvertently I'm a jerk, <laughs> then I, what did I do? Right. I'm sure I did something. I had to have done something. Then uh, so we're going to end this video. So this is what Double Deciding was about. And let's see, like, finally, what this person says about this guy. And he even talks about, you know, how balanced you are and stuff like that. And we'll end it. And we will, and we will end this video in a very wholesome way. For constantly transitioning from what you learned, uh, saving the world to actually helping everyday people yeah. save their world. Yeah. You know, transferring those skills and, and sharing them with us. The thing I love about you is you dive deeper into the same thing and just try to spread it to more people. You're not trying to take on all these new things. You're just going into one thing that you're master at. Yeah. And really going deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helping a lot of people save money, make money, and really have just better relationships. At the end of the day, it's relationship yeah. that you're yep. teaching. You're yep. teaching how to be better in relationships, how to build bridges as opposed to uh, creating walls between people. Yeah. So it's a lot of walls every day that we create. <laughs> yeah. Whether it be the Starbucks, a hotel, uh, a hostage, and so I acknowledge you for the consistent work you're doing. I really value it. And I know a lot of people do as well. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I don't know if I asked you this question last time. So I'll ask you again and see if it changed. Uh, he's going to uh, ask about his uh, three truths. I don't want to like <laughs> hear about it. But this guy's material is actually really good in terms of negotiating. And his book is really a complete book. There is no hidden information. There is no like a back end funnel taking you to like a master class or whatever. It is actually a very good book that will teach you how to negotiate under all sorts of circumstances. Very well written. I even read three fourths of the book. Very, very insightful. Definitely check this person, Chris Voss out. Definitely check this person, Chris Voss out. And if you like this video, hit comment down below and let me know. Do you like this kind of video? If you do, I will try to make more. That's it guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.